Welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is the man, the myth, the hippogriff, Silver Quill. I have ridden the mighty Tetzel Worm. You mean Tetzel Worm? That too. Ah, so how was it? Was it everything you expected? Well, when it goes into the ground, you get a lot of sand in your mouth. It's a bit of a... I see. And also joining us is the Pokemon trainer with a shiny EV, Sapphire Heart Songs. It's shiny Ombreon, and oh my god, it's not like I like this episode or anything. Ah. <laughs> oh, very Sundari much. Screw you. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. A uh, little tired. I don't like getting up in the morning. I'd rather sleep until 1 a 1 p.m. 1 a.m. Wow. All right. Well, 1 p.m. 1 a.m. is you know. <laughs> All right, then. And also joining us is, well, I, I, I don't have a proper intro, but whenever he henshins, he becomes Manga Kamen. Screw the rules, I have the scepter of fire. Uh, so how are you doing, man? Oh, I am just peachy this morning. Peachy this morning. Uh, people at home should know that we're recording this at an ungodly hour of, what now, 7 a.m. for some people... Oh, it's eight for me. Yeah, eight for some people. It's seven. It's seven for silver, for manga, and it's nine for me. And yet, I'm the one complaining about getting up early. Yeah, so everyone's tired, but still, we're we're all good. We're all good. We're doing this because we want to, because we love you guys. And for today, yes, for today's episode review, we are going to do season six, episode five, overall episode number one twenty two, and that episode is "Got a Fire." Original air date on April 16, written by Luana Lewis and Christine Sonko. So, yeah, this episode is a good spike episode. Say that again. It's a good spike episode. Oh, there's a word you never think you hear. It's the sound of heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> Remember the last time he was on screen? He attempted to jump off a roof just because he wanted to get out. Yeah. Don't remind us. Don't remind us, Norman. Let's just, let's just forget that episode ever existed and just move on to this one. <laughs> Alrighty then. Don't live in the past, live in the here Princess, and now. Princess, Princess Spike never happened. Repeat after me. Princess Spike never happened. Princess Spike? Wow, that episode did happen. No, it didn't. Uh, I, I'm just trolling you like how Silver trolls you with Ebonics. Straight Shut up, up. Mark hands. <laughs> Shut up. Oh. oh god, I'm with you guys for the next few hours. Ugh. <laughs> Don't be player hating player. I hate you all. <laughs> uh, you gotta get hardcore straight out of the get too. Aye, <laughs> <laughs> aye, listen to that. She's going insane, y'all. Oh, I thought Golem had slipped in here. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that too. Well, I'm distracting audience at home for um, the synopsis of this episode. Should we go for first impressions? Sure. Alrighty then. So, let's go for manga. What's your first impressions of the episode? Well, I like the show, of course, but uh, the episode itself, I really did enjoy it. I mean, I'm always interested in seeing how we get more cultures in this universe and seeing, like, a little bit more in depth on how dragon rulers are selected it is actually pretty interesting to me. Not to mention we had like the whole designs of dragons. And we had our newest <laughs> princess, or should I say empress now, Ember. And I think she's a good character and I hope we actually get to see her again. And that she's not just a one-time thing. You're just happy because she's a total Sundere. I will not say anything to that. I will not incriminate myself. <laughs> yes. I have the right to stay silent. But I'm revoking that right for Sapphire. What about you? Uh, same here. I enjoyed this episode. I enjoyed going to the Dragon Place. I enjoyed the episode in general. I enjoyed Princess Ember's design, of course. I really like her design as well as her personality. It's like, there were some moments where I had that total, yeah, that's probably something I'd say. I didn't really compare her to a Sundere at first until everybody else started, like, saying, like, oh, she's a total Sundere. It's like, huh, that makes a lot of sense. My favorite moment from her was when she was, uh, saying, um, what was it, uh, don't make me talk about my feelings, like, <laughs> That was the best line that ever came out of her mouth, I swear to God. 
I enjoyed this episode. I thought it was going to crash and burn because it was a Spike episode, but I didn't want it to crash and burn because of the cool title of the episode. But I mostly give my props to Christina Sonko and Joanna Lewis because they've become my new favorite newcoming writers because they've written some of my favorite episodes. I mean, Castle Sweet Castle was a mixed bag for me, but... I love almost every other episode that they've done within Season 5, and I love every episode in Season 6 that they've done, and I think that's all I have to say. All righty then. And Silver, what about you? I enjoyed how this episode went against the grain on the previous episodes. Up, up until now, dragons have been dismissed as just violent, greedy, uh, disruptive. Spike even renounced being a dragon at one point. Because he'd rather be a pony. And people have taken from that different symbolisms. Uh, for some, it's a racial thing, rejecting the natural vice of the dragon race. Others, it's a gender issue. Dragons are boys, ponies are girls. Spike would rather side with the girls. All this absolutes. The introduction of Ember not only allows Spike a chance to show his best, with making the best Spike episode I've ever seen in the show, uh, but also introduces a character that shifts the dynamic that adds some greater personality and depth to the dragon culture and opens the door to better stories. Uh, the only negativity in this uh, episode, as far as I can tell, is that the ponies are just sort of there by requirement rather than purpose. Oh, yeah. I can definitely say that. All right. And as for me, well, I don't know what I was expecting with this one. All I knew that it was a Spike episode. I didn't see any trailers, I didn't read any spoilers, so I came in blind. And what I got was something really interesting. And getting to see Spike being really awesome and, well, let's just say that he's grown into this role of, I'm a dragon but I've been brought up by ponies and I'm going to do what I think is right, while dragons think that, uh, oh, you, you're kind of a pony person, blah, blah, blah. You're very namby pamby So getting to see uh, Princess Amber interact with Spike and her having a change of, well, not really change of heart, but her interacting with Spike does feel, or uh, it feels kind of awesome. And let's just say Spike is just too awesome in this series. Uh, and with first impressions away, should we start reviewing? Sure. Sorry, if, sorry if I'm off tempo. I am just really, really off my game today. But anyway, we do a short synopsis, and this is really short. In order to save his friends, Spike is forced to compete in a prelude gauntlet for the title of Dragon Lord. Yes, that's the synopsis for this episode. And if you haven't seen this episode, pause it here. And watch that. Spoilers! Episode. Yes, spoilers ahead. So with that out of the way, we shall start. And we start off with Rarity going into the caves looking for gems and being very careful not to illuminate the cave because of the sleeping bats. Um, Rarity collects gems and suddenly there's a huge light source and it's not Rarity but it's Spike because Spike is glowing. Rarity is the only pony who can make a miner's hat look adorable. Oh, that is true. Bows and sequins solve everything, apparently. Ah, uh, yes. Mm. After all, you gotta be fashionable. Yeah, and also bedazzle everything. That's what I learned from Gravity Falls. Bedazzle everything. Although, I do have to point out that the only way you can get bats tangled in your hair is if you grab them and physically place them in yon hair. Ergo, Rarity, what have you been getting up to, girl? <laughs> Well, actually, is... a son who actually has had a bat in his hair, that's not really true. Yeah, how did that come about, I wonder? Uh, when I was 13 years old, I went to a cave with a bunch of friends. They ditched me, and when I turned on the light, the bats flew down and attacked me, and when I got out, there was one stuck in my mullet. <laughs> well, that, well, there's the pro- You got a mullet, man. That thing's like, <laughs> that thing's like <laughs> a, a squid upon thine head, taking it upon everything. It had a life of its own. It just reached up and grabbed the bat and just sucked it in, trying to eat it. <laughs> yes, the, the bat was like, help, I'm being devoured by a mullet. <laughs> oh, Do you have a freaking mullet back then, manga? 
One of these days, I'll eat this boy's head. <laughs> num, 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 num. Oh wow! Well. So the, the great mullet uprising of eighteen fifty two. <laughs> oh wow! Well. And after that, we do see that the princesses are having a good time, drinking tea and eating. What's that now? Some snacks, some delicious, delicious snacks. Till Rarity barges in, saying to Twilight that there's something wrong with Spike. Please help. And meanwhile, when Celestia says, oh, we'd visit more often, but some pony always needs our help. I, I'm off in the corners going, I don't believe you. <laughs> uh, well, to, be fair, we, to be fair, we don't really focus on them. So, And there is, they keep showing the princesses this season, and they've been showing them in much more uh, casual roles. Maybe we will actually get that royalty episode this season. Who knows? Yeah. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> So with an itchy and glowing spike, Princess Celestia said that, Oh, I've seen this before. This is the call of the Dragon Lord. Yes, Spike needs to go see what he wants and it'll be all over. You know what I'm really concerned about? What? I really hope they wash that table. Ah, yes. Well, I mean, Rarity, who has strong dragon scales? Well, Rarity's the one who's tracking mud all over the place. If she had a moment of clarity, she'd be like, ah! <laughs> Yeah. Although, you know, she cares because she didn't stop to take a shower. <laughs> yes. And if you take a look, see, Rarity's all muddy and dirty, and she doesn't mind it because she's more concerned of Spike. What does that say? I think it's interesting that the bow was actually not dirty in the scene. She defended it with her life. Yay. So, after Princess Celestia explains that Dragon Lords are calling for him, and... Spike decides that I need to go, but I don't go alone. Twilight and Rarity are very excited to head off to the Dragonlands. For Twilight can do more research and Rarity can do more fashion. Yay. And so many fans uh, have gotten mad at Twilight for being excited about uh, getting to study dragon culture over helping Spike in their eyes. Like, ah, she's geeking out, but at her heart she's still going to... Look out for Spike, numero uno. Yeah, I mean, the only reason why she's going is because to help Spike. The help, the studying of the dragons is just uh, a bonus. There's a reason why there's a there's a saying called two birds, one stone. Yeah. Because we basically don't know anything about dragons in the MLP universe. So, I mean, what other time are you going to get a chance to go to the lands that are going to be filled with the, with the creatures that are, as we find out, don't really care for the magical ponies. <laughs> uh, true that, true that. Their main focus, to raid them of their pillows. <laughs> that's, dun, dun, dun. that's one of them. But we head off to the Dragonlands by train? Uh, by whatevs. <clears throat> yeah, probably. By block convenience. Ah, yes, that. By montage. Commercial montage. Yes. Let's go with that. By commercial montage. By princess elimination. As you think, oh, the dragon lord, the lord of all dragons, is calling a meeting. Hmm. Mayhaps we should have some super powerful alicorns to be on hand to understand the significance of this great event. Celestia Luna, did you say that you had a day off? <laughs> yeah. What's that? You su suddenly, some pony needs your help? How convenient. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, day off tomorrow, not doing stuff, so don't don't disturb. We're, we're not interested in helping. No. Now this, now, this might be just me overthinking right here, and I want to go back a touch, I'm sorry. But they said, what the two princesses said, they've seen this before, and I'm wondering, are there other dragons that are kind of domesticated, or at least uh, live in nearby domesticated areas in Equestria, that they've seen this before, or... Maybe in the past there were more peaceful dragons or something? I don't know. I mean... Who in... knows? Maybe Celestia's out kidnapping more dragon eggs. Oh, no, I won't say that. But um, an interesting theory there you have there, Manga. But I don't know. It's one of those situations where they're, they live for a thousand years or longer. And for them to say that we've seen this before does make sense because, well, they've lived longer than anyone in Equestria. And yet she still doesn't know what a Paris Pride is. She does. She's just trolling. You say that. I do. 
You say that. Troll, troll, troll. <laughs> your lips say troll, but your eyes say, I don't know. I don't believe you. <laughs> but anywho, so when our heroes arrive at the Dragonlands, uh, we are greeted by Garbo, the jerk dragon from... Uh, what's that episode called? I forgot. But it was that one last episode when Garbo was on. Quest. Yes, Dragon Quest. When that was on. And as per usual, Garbo is a jerk towards Spike and call him names like Pansy. I forgot. As name calling goes, he's actually pretty lame at it. Ah, uh, yes. True that. True that. Mm-hmm. He's also pretty lame at what we're going to be seeing in the rest of the episode too. Yes. And as we move on, Garbo sits on a rock, which is inhabited by two ponies, Twilight Sparkle and Rarity. <laughs> and Spike proclaims, that's my rock. Rarity must feel like a marshmallow. Like a rock! I was strong as I could be. <laughs> uh, and then we are introduced to the Dragon Lord, Dragon Lord Torch. Not as cool as Dragon Lord Ojutai, but still, this dragon is huge and Commands with an iron fist and a booming voice. And the staff. Don't forget the staff. Oh, the staff. Yes, the staff. So once he proclaims that, hey, I'm going to retire and I need a successor, may the strongest one win, and throws this staff, the staff of, what was it called again? It was the Bloodstone Scepter. Yes, the Bloodstone Scepter. Once he threw that into the fiery volcanoes, (laughs) well, dragons are just confusing. He throws it the fiery volcano. He has got awesome aim, however. <laughs> I mean, that tiny thing across that distance, the way it lands, <laughs> that is uh, some first rate. Never play uh, ping pong with this guy. <laughs> and it was oh, a you. flick, too. It was a flick. It was a flick, so he's going he, to ruin everything. <laughs> yeah. Although I have to wonder, like, if it's a scepter that they're going after, why is the episode called the Gauntlet of Fire when a gauntlet is usually like a um armor's well, hand and well, arm? A gauntlet can also refer to like a series of challenges. Mm-hmm. That too. Oh, uh, okay, I'm stupid. Let's move on. <laughs> no, you're not. Not stupid. You just need a bigger vocabulary. Yes, and a dictionary. Get Webster in here. <laughs> yes. Or you could be like Silver and complain that I don't get enough references. That's messed up, yo. <laughs> no, that's his job. I don't want to take his you. job. <laughs> uh, so, anywho, once the scepter is in the volcano, the challenge is done and everyone has stopped glowing and itchy. So, Spike tries to get out of this because, well, I'm not interested in becoming Dragon Lord. I just want to go home and stop itching. And when he does that, the Dragon Lord scolds him and asks, What the hey are you doing? And Spike says, Hey, uh, I'm not interested. I'm gonna go home. Uh, can I? And we are first intro- and then we are introduced to Princess Ember. Fan favorite. Yes. Yeah, you will remember her. Yes, fan favorite. This one episode, she's become very popular. Very, very popular. Like Trixie. Although I'll say this, if the minute uh, Torch flings the the scepter in and everyone stops glowing, you think, yeah. So if Spike had just stubbornly stayed home, mm-hmm. would would the call have uh, subsided? Nah, because the Dragon Lord called everyone, and he was not there for the thing to happen. Yeah, but well, that- every dragon. I mean, there's like what twenty, thirty dragons there at most. I mean, none of the biggins showed up, so. I'm Maybe just, it's something like, I mean, I don't think any of them could actually fit in the caves anyway. Yeah, they're, they're in deep hibernation for a thousand years. I'm just saying, that'd be hilarious if, if, M, if, uh, Torch is just sitting there on his throne and was like, can we go now? No, we're waiting for the last dragon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ten years later, he'll be here any minute. <laughs> any minute. Uh. <laughs> So this whole episode could have been prevented with anti-itch cream. <laughs> if they exist. Uh, but still, but still, um, after Dragon Lord Torch expels or excuse Spike here from entering the tournament, Amber wants to join the tournament by saying, I too want to join. And Torch says, no, you're tiny and puny. And yeah, you're not fit to enter. Well, he's not wrong. 
He's not completely wrong anyway. Yeah. Although she argues that she's smarter than everybody else, so... Which is true. She's the Twilight Sparkle Dragon. Yay! Yeah. The Sunday Twilight Sparkle Dragon. <laughs> yes. Who doesn't demonstrate her knowledge at all. <laughs> well, chat at least. But anyway, we then hear a lot of talking about the dragons. One saying that wants to steal pillows, want to plunder the village, and Garble saying that he wants to destroy the ponies just because he's a jerk. Yes. Well, he said he wanted to do it for revenge, but what reason? I mean, I haven't seen Dragon Quest in a while, but still, yeesh. What'd they do you? Pony simulated him. And if you think about it, I am a big bad dragon. Ponies, tiny and non-consequential, defeated me. I am humiliated. I need to do something. Revenge. Yeah, screw the ponies that got me over. I'll get them all. They all look the same to me. Yeah. That's righteous! <laughs> <laughs> Although, really, he should be going after the, all the trees. Oh, yep, true that. Watch out for that tree. <laughs> Including the flyer shy? Oh, no. Especially George. for the shy. George, George, George of the Dragons, friend to you and me. <laughs> um, ah, finally someone gets that reference. Yes. Uh-huh. Well, I got the reference. I just, you know. Hallelujah! She got the reference. Yay. But anyway, we then see Spike saying that, oh no, I need to join because if not, Pony... Was it Ponyville or Equestria? All Equestria. Uh, all Equestria. Yeah. All of Equestria will be in trouble. Oh no, we must... I must do something, and I must participate in the competition. But judging by the amount of dragons here, I would have expected a lot more than 10. I'm impressed they're wearing armor. Uh, what's up with the armor? Maybe they're afraid of lightning? Uh, Maybe their scales aren't as strong as wear well. armor then. <laughs> yeah. I, actually, Garble seems to be the only one who favors speed and maneuverability uh, as he isn't wearing any armor. Mm, oh, that's true. And Yeah, but have we seen that the armor doesn't really seem to handicap any of them for the most part? Mm-hmm. Oh, ex- except for a certain one. Yep, yep. And, well, out of all the dragon that doesn't have an armor, it's Spike. And Dragon Lord Torch says, Didn't I expel you from this? And he says, I want to join. Okay, whatever, you can join. Let's just do this. Bipolar much? Yeah, I mean, he wants it to get over, and the Spike winning, pff, fat chance. And with that, Scarble says, good luck, Spike, I'm throwing you into the ocean. Good luck. And Spike's passive-aggressive about it. Well, I was going to swim anyway. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and as you mentioned, yeah. and as you guys mentioned, yeah. <laughs> and, <Yeah>. damn it! <laughs> <laughs> and as you guys mentioned before, armor sucks when flying because we see one dragon got bumped by Garble and fall to their death. And luckily Spike being there decides to help. And Spike is a badass. Like, he is pulling the dragon with armor at the same time. That got to be heavy. Yeah, especially for a little baby dragon like him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And, well, once the dragon uh, regains consciousness, we get to see that it is Princess Ember. Oh no! What Big is she, shock. What is she doing there? She's doing a note to Wonder Woman. Oh, how so? Well, think about it. In the original Wonder Woman origin story, we had Princess Diana wanting to become like the emissary for the Amazons in the world of the men. But her mother denied her doing that, even though she was practically, you know, the best around, the best candidate. So her mother had a competition to decide who would be basically the Wonder Woman for the group. And Princess Diana actually disguised herself in golden armor and won the challenge. Hmm? And thus became Wonder Woman. Ah. But the only difference is there's no twirling to get on that outfit. (laughs) Well, she didn't transform in that episode and comic either. Yes. Pardon pardon me just one moment. (coughs) Nerd! You're even bigger nerd. So yeah. That is not the point. Hello, Kettle. How are you doing today? (laughs) I'm doing well, Pot. How about yourself? (laughs) Oh, black as ever! 
<laughs> You've undone yourself. You've put yourself in the role of the kettle. Damn it. <laughs> uh, but anywho, uh, if you are interested in reading that comic, it's out there. But if you are too lazy to read, uh, DC has made an um, animated movie of it. I would say go watch it. It's pretty good. And back to ponies. After the reveal, Princess Amber hears noise because seaweed just talk. That's not normal. What's going on? Maybe not for you. Oh, why is? Dep- <laughs> it depends. I had that really strong sake at a sushi bar one night. Man, that seaweed had such conversation. Oh uh, yeah, like oh yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah, but the fugu was a jerk. Yeah. Ah, uh, no, we don't talk about the fugu. Yeah, but the Inari was pretty nice though. Like, <laughs> I'll just stick with green tea fried ice cream. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, There's your sense of adventure, young lady. Yeah. Yeah, she just likes squid ink noodles. That's... I actually would like to try that sometime. <laughs> Maybe one day. But anyway, once the pony are there, confronted, and strike saying, oh, they're my friends. They're here for moral support. And does anybody remember the scene? Because I am derped. Basically, Embers are like, Shah, whatevs. And then uh, Gar will be flying in again. He getting owned, son. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He getting owned oh, by the School of Hard gosh. Rocks. He got stoned. <laughs> uh, literally. And when the group wants to leave, Spike just says, Oh, no, Spike doesn't say anything. He just goes and help. And Gar will, being the joke that he is, says, I knew you would help and kicks sand on him. Ah. <sighs> Yes, Ember... just like the classic beach bully jerk. And then, and then God will be all like, yo dog, I smell some ponies up in the hizzy. Silver? Uh, yes? Lightning Plus is not going to be the only one trying to pummel you to the ground at this rate, and I'm going to make sure that <laughs> Dr. Wolf gets it on camera. <laughs> you found me, dog? <laughs> I, I feel you playing, I'll be sure you get my best side. <laughs> yo. I will. Yo, Put the yo. knife up your ass. Oh wow. <laughs> oh I don't know if I should I don't know if Sweetie Boss should do her work or not on that one but anyway with violence aside uh, Garbal almost finds out the ponies till Princess Amber stops him saying that I just raided ponies and so yeah I smell like ponies yeah yeah and Spike decides that um, thank you for saving me and we should work together because working together is much better Rarity then talks to Spike about this idea he has. Is it a good idea of helping Princess Ember because she could betray you at some point, you know? And Twilight nerds out about, hmm, this is not normal for dragons. I think you should proceed with this plan. And so they do. They fly and Spike becomes another set of eyes for Ember's flying, which is cool. We get to see. And as we see Spike and Ember arrive at the cave mouth, we see that all dragons are, well, even though they're fireproof, they can still get hurt by fire. Strange. Well, not really hurt, they were just singed. Mm, but still, come on, Spike fell into lava and enjoyed the sensation of being burned by lava. Well, it's also... Do we know what the fire is here? I mean, is it like a dragon's fire? Because... Actually, one of the dragons, you know, lit a match, let's just say. And the others <laughs> smell. Oh. So you're like, no, we're oh. out. We're out. Oh, oh yeah. gross. Silver, no. Bad silver. Yeah. All of you try to get that image out of your head. Oh. You. No, bad silver, bad. But anyway. Hey, Lucky for you, I'm already used to that kind of humor, so it doesn't affect me at all. <laughs> if this is bad, I don't want to be doing it. Right. It's gone. But anyway. Now, I think we should address, like, the big elephant in the room on this. Which is? Amber's helmet. Hmm. She lost it. Yeah. Or left it, really. Yeah. And But here's the thing. I've been... I made the mistake of watching a certain person's uh, stream for this episode when it first came out. I'm not going to say who because I don't want to be disrespectful to them at all. But they wouldn't... During the break, they wouldn't shut up about the stupid helmet. They said... I mean, she discarded it. She didn't need it. I mean, she needed it. I mean, what's stopping the other dragons from just going over a torch and saying, hey, your daughter's in the race? And I'm thinking, 
Hello, the sub that can control all dragons. If she gets her hands on it, what do you think Skringy's gonna do about it? Yeah, and with the chance of becoming a dragon lord, I'm sure nobody really cares. Yeah, priorities. Yeah, they're priorities. All a... <laughs> yeah. They're all in a race right now, so I, I can't imagine any of them stopping and going back to Sea Torch. Yeah, I mean. And also kind of, speaking of, they're focused on the race too. I mean, it's like, Oh, that's Princess M. <laughs> uh, rock. Wah, 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 wah. I mean, it, it just seems like, yeah, it's kind of a little continuity flow, but at the same time, the helmet did this, did really mess up with their eyesight too. I mean, no peripheral vision in that thing. Yeah, and to be honest, it's just a helmet. It, you don't really, it's not the main focus here. It's not like she's flying at this one scene and she doesn't have wings and the next she has. It's not that kind of continuity error we're talking about. This is a chosen thing that they wanted to do because uh, the people want to see her face. And here, we give you the face. So by them close, by them covering the face, it'll be kind of sucky. So we get to see more face. So that's good. Yeah, it's like a blue like face. yesterday's episode. Uh, <coughs> yesterday's episode. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to talk about that one. And oh, by that, we're talking about the Rainbow Dash episode. But anyway, uh, <laughs> because when this episode comes out, it'll be all topsy turvy and inside out and just confusing. But anyway. Wibbly wobbly, tiny wimey. Yes, that's the word I'm looking for. But anyway, uh, we see a tree talking to them. Wow, how did they get up there? <laughs> Well, Fluttershy, yeah. Fluttershy's spirit is strong with them. Yes, but Rarity and Twilight are there giving them moral support. And yes, as they go into the cave, oh my god, how does this cave work? Actually, it turns out there are a lot more dragons. They're all up in the, in another chamber above and below, just moving the rocks up and down. <laughs> this is exhausting. Why did I lose that bet? <laughs> I don't know, I'm more partial to the UFO dog ending, you know, where there's this dog in control panel just messing with them all. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. Yeah. We do see that as they try to go past the chewing caves, (laughs) I'm going to call it chewing caves because it looks like teeth munching on dragons. We see that Amber and Spike work together to get through the caves. So Garble also uses that path. And I do believe that we get to see Crackle. Briefly, getting crushed. Yeah. Crackle's always... <laughs> Crackle is joining in. Yay. <laughs> Although I just had a... I just had a realization. What? Why do we assume this is a natural cave? What mm-hmm. if mm-hmm. there are oh. earth dragons? Oh, and, no. And those jaws were... It, those jaws were its teeth, and now they're going through its digestive tract. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. And the scepter is actually located in its colon. <laughs> oh, you had to go there, didn't you? No, they're going there. Oh, God. But so it would be a skull. twin-headed dragon? Oh, <laughs> uh, you guys. And yet this does not faze me in the slightest. Oh, you guys. But anyway... Once... Play it, that's whack. <laughs> Journey to the center of the dragon! Yeah, once they are into the center, we get to see that, wow, Twilight Sparkle and Rarity got there first, with no scratches on them. How? They're the vector for the audience. They are cheering for them as we're cheering for them. They're up they're up front because we can magically cut to the next scene, uh, whereas these characters are trapped in their continuity. Ah. Uh, yes. That is good. Okay. Hi. Also, it's the best part about them being on the sidelines, when uh, Garble gets his butt kicked by Princess Ember. Yay, violence! <laughs> Yay. But still, um, if you guys love roasted marshmallow, we almost have one because Rarity, for what, a, for no apparent reason, lost her balance and almost fell over. I mean, here's the thing. This is a nice contrast to the start of the episode where Spike, he thought, I'm going with Rarity. I've, it's my role as a guy to be her bodyguard, mm-hmm. even though she can care for herself, no problem. Uh, here, Spike is not doing this because he's the man <laughs> and has to, and has to save Billy Folk. It's just his friend is in trouble. He acts quickly. That's all there is to it. And that's honestly, I'm glad that shows him in a more positive light. It's more direct, more honest, and a lot simpler than how we often try to assign roles. Mm-hmm. True that. 
And Princess Amber is confused by this. Why are you guys supporting each other? Why did you save the marshmallow? Why are you doing all this? Because they're my friends. Although now, suddenly you realize that Princess Amber is like Princess Luna. What is this friendship thou speakest of? <laughs> uh, yo, man. It's like when two people like each other, but not that much. We hang out, yo. Why would you hang from the ceiling? <laughs> Uh, Is there gold on the ceiling? I don't know. But yeah, um, at this point, Princess Amber is just confused. And her reaction is to say that, No, we're done. We're true. I just wanted to use you so I can get here. I'm flying off. Bye. You'll be back. <laughs> they always come back. They come you back to the love, You can't escape the friendship gospel. <laughs> yes. And as they travel deep into the caverns, they discover the throne. I won't say throne, but what was it called? Scepter. Yes. They discover the scepter and Spike rushes for it, only to be caught by Garble. And Garble being the big meanie that he is, bullies Spike. And Princess Amber to the rescue, saying that she was wrong and she needed the help. And yeah, I like this feeling. I'm not sure what... Don't! No, she doesn't. She's like, don't make me talk about my feelings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> although, although the fun sake is that they're in the inner chamber looking for the scepter, but there's an interceptor intercepting their interception for the for the interceptor. Yes. Um... <laughs> oh, the interception deception. Yes. And Garble knocks into Twilight and Rarity, revealing them... To be there, and well, Garble is gonna have a good time. And I okay. like the wiki page um, here. It says like, "Use your magic, idiots." <laughs> well, that's true. I mean, so many people have argued, "Oh, dragons can actually resist magic." Okay, I don't remember that happening. Uh, or D and D lore, they can. You you keep your D and D lore out of it until you bring an owl there. Then we'll talk. <laughs> I think but, I think they're just trying to make some sense out of like that whole entire scene where they don't fight back. Well, see, there is I mean, no... yeah. well, that's the thing. You are they are in another country, and dragon relations with ponies, as we've seen, probably aren't the best. So having an international incident, yeah, probably not the best thing to do. Except uh, really, politics is not played with dragons. Space they operate with might makes right. So if you yeah, but, if you curb stomp a dragon, you pretty much get. To make the rules, so I'll... that's also the same thing. I mean, you're stopping them from going revenge kill, and especially like, say, like, let's say that they actually did fight back, and the other dragon saw that. Not only are the ponies intruding on a very, I'm guessing, sacred ritual going on with the dragons. I mean, it's their new leader, mm -hmm. but they're in a foreign land, and they're in a place they shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. And to top it off, they just assaulted a dragon. Mm -hmm. And also, um, they interrupted a secret event. I, I know, I just but, said that. Oh, sorry, my bad. But, but Twilight is a smart cookie. I mean, all she has to do is teleport herself in rarity out of Garble's path as he lunges for them. Next thing you know, he's face-planted on the side of the road. They've not done a thing. True, but and they left right. Spike in there with him. Yeah. And he knows that they are friends with him. Yeah. Or better yet, Teleport Garble back into the gauntlet so he can get a good mashing in the stone <laughs> teeth again. Uh, nom, 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 nom. The truth is, there's so many ways Twilight and Rarity could get out of this without even resorting to physical violence. So I find them just afraid. It's like, ladies, if you're not going to do anything, you don't need to be in this episode. How about this? How about this? Uh, my headcanon or my theory for this scene is Twilight is waiting till the last minute. Before she does anything, like just waiting till the last minute before she acts out anything. And before she could do anything, Princess Amber spears Garble. And Spike here grabs the scepter and, well, becomes Dragon Lord. How about that? Does that work? I don't go with head cannons. Because uh, ultimately you're, you're writing the story for the show. Because the show don't care. Yeah, true that. But still, it does make a good theory that Twilight Sparkle is just really planning out every variable before she acts out her moves. Besides, I'm, right now I'm, I'm bewitched by Spike's dilated pupils as he is apparently tripping the life fantastic as he takes the scepter. 
Oh, well, oh God. honestly speaking here, I, I wish when he took the scepter, the scene goes back to him. I was hoping that he grown, you know, like grown a few inches taller or something like that. I was hoping for that, but we didn't get that at all. Or at least get some wings. Yeah, um, yes, wings. We, we need that too. But there are some dragons that don't have wings, so, but still. We have our new Dragon Lord, and the Dragon Lord commands Garble to hug every pony he sees. Every dragon. Every dragon? Did I say that? Yeah. Every dragon. You said every pony. Oh, sorry, my bad. So... That's literally like the best punishment ever. Oh, not, no. <laughs> hugging every dragon is one thing, but hugging every dragon and not explaining why he's doing it. Once again, best punishment ever. Yes. Spike's just a little sadistic. <laughs> and as the wiki shows here, Garble hugs the first dragon he sees. It's a blue dragon with armor. And he squeezed because Senpai notices him. <laughs> Are you sure it's a him, though? Uh, probably. I don't know. I mean, I thought I think... that Crackle was originally a girl, but it was a guy, apparently. <laughs> apparently, there's only, like, two female dragons in this whole episode. The one that wants nothing but burps and then Princess Ember. Yep. Talk about polar opposites. Mm-hmm. One's totally stupid, one's actually completely competent. I don't know. I think burps could be a very valuable form of communication. True that, true that. Uh. Ah, you, no. Come on, that was a great compliment. Yes, yes. I just quoted all of Hemingway. Oh, wow, you. Really, I thought that was Shakespeare. But anyway, Bite gives us the scepter to Ember, saying that she should become the Dragon Lord because... I never wanted to become Dragon Lord to begin with. And, well, since you're a good dragon, I can trust you with this. And, well, Princess Ember is kind of awkwardly saying, What are you doing to me? It's called hugging. Okay, now, I am confused, but I like it. And blush, because Senpai notices her. With a little, like, pat pat. It's like, okay, you can get off now. <laughs> And her eyes go wiggy, too, when she gets the scepter. That thing is just the ultimate rush, I bet. <laughs> yes. And they head off to see the Dragon Lord Torch. And he freaks out at first. But Ember says that I've gotten the scepter and I am worthy of it. Now I am Dragon Lord. Everybody bow down to me. I am the Dragon Lord. And <laughs> she pulls off a joke that doesn't really work. Uh, she she she's agrees with work him. in progress. Yeah. <laughs> Garble comes in again, hugs Dragon Lord, Torch, oh, just Torch. And, yeah, everybody has a laugh, and the ponies and Spike go home to Ponyville. Twilight geeking out because she can send letter to Embers if she wants to know anything about the dragons. So, yay, a new dragon thingy for Twilight to know. Yay, much fun to be had. Research! Yay! And the episode ends with... The ponies going home and having fun. So, that was the episode. I hope I did well in my hosting. But still, um, what do you guys think about this one? Like, should we go to final thoughts? Yeah. Yes, alrighty then. So, I started off with manga. So, what do you do? What do you think about this episode, man? Well, as people pointed out, Rarity and Twilight weren't really used this episode, but they were basically supposed to be like a stand-in for us, the audience, which is something I can understand for the most part. I do enjoy the episode very much, and it is actually a good Spike episode. We get Spike's usual side characterness, as in he's the voice of reason and a little bit sarcastic as well, which is something that I do like to see in his character for most of the time. I really did enjoy the episode. It's not perfect, but then again, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm looking for entertainment, and this episode certainly has it. Mm, true that, true that. Totally not quoting your own review, right? <laughs> it doesn't really matter because it's his review, and he can use it anytime he wants. <laughs> and Seppi, what about you? I really love this episode. I think I got my thoughts out on... um. You know, Princess Ember and all that during the beginning of this review. Although there is one sort of topic that I'm sort of disappointed that I never really got to talk about with Silver. Mm -hmm. The feminist and masculinity portion of that part. Maybe we'll talk about it some other time, but I was actually sort of um, wanting to get into that with you, Silver. 
But yeah, uh, I loved this episode. I had a lot of fun with this. I had my laughs. Really stood out. It was like the best episode of season six so far for me during the time. Mm-hmm. I was very satisfied. All right. And Silver, what about you? Well, I did talk about well, mm, how to describe this succinctly. Basically, the, a little less than a week before this episode aired, an article came out criticizing the depiction of masculinity in the show, uh, as defined by modern culture, and perhaps outdated, an outdated definition of that. Uh, so here comes this episode, and watching it, it's actually kind of fascinating that Ember, as the more aggressive, independent, and assertive style, represents classically defined masculine traits. Whereas Spike, who's more passive aggressive, but more emotionally connected, more emphasizing teamwork, that is traditionally labeled, uh, feminine traits. And the only way they succeed is by combining the two, which I actually prefer to Dragon Quest, where I viewed it as boys are awful, girls are great, <laughs> or some people viewed it as racial terms. So this is a much more balanced episode in my eyes, a much more a diverse and celebratory message and very positive, I think, for a young audience. Uh, dragons still remain a might makes right. We're just here to break stuff kind of species. Mm-hmm. I, as much as I enjoy getting to see realms outside of Ponydom, they all seem to be pretty awful. And negative. Uh, like and towards negative. like ponies. Well, Twilight, Twilight is fascinating to learn from the dragons in a academic sense. But there doesn't seem to be anything they can offer to enrich Equestria. And I'm beginning to get a little worried that Equestria is so dang perfect, the rest of the world is so dang awful. That's really an egocentric message. We're the best. I'd like to see a, another culture that could offer Equestrians a different perspective in a positive way, much as Zakura has. Hmm, all right. Yeah, we haven't really seen anything from zebra culture before. I think we might be seeing them soon, if I'm not mistaken, from what I heard of the Peter Patters or the chit chats from the Great Vine of the Ponydom, saying that we might see more of zebras in the future. Although, if it is like uh, how you're saying it is, Silver, I mean, you gotta remember that we got like the two rulers of Equestria. They kind of control the day and night cycle here. This, they control but... who gets the crops and who get doesn't. So basically, they've de- denied the rest of the world to well, they, uh, to support their that. own ponies. Well, that actually makes that makes them sound rather terrible. <laughs> yes. Well, you have to imagine that it's also well. Yeah, I mean, what? And this is my own little thing right here, but I'm not going to go into it because, like you said, head cannon, that kind of thing. But you do have to consider. I mean, you have like Equestria, a country that's probably like a thousand years old at the most <laughs> right now. Maybe more than that, I'm not sure. And you've got these two ponies that control the sun and the moon, which affect the entire planet. And Equestria is just a country, not the entire planet itself, as we've learned. Well, I wonder if there, if the Everfree Forest has its own weather, and it just does things on its own, what if Equestria is the exception to the rest of the world, that they're the only ones who go through this? Well, that's weather, not the planetary alignments. Oh, I wonder about that, too. Could it be that the sun and the moon are basically magical constructs, are you saying? Very possible. But again, it, you're right, it is headcanon. It's speculation, but I just question how much... One, we assume that they're moving a celestial body, a giant ball of, of uh, nuclear Jeez! fusion, <laughs> or a giant lump of rock in the sky. What if they are just, well, points? Probably. I love how we went to final thoughts and then this happened. Hey, this, well, I mean, this yeah. is final thoughts. This... You also had to consider like the <laughs> opening from season four. I mean, the sun and the moon were at the same time and it was night on one side and that's not how that works. Yeah, I mean, that's magic. Like, this is the show's logic we're dealing with. So, yeah, if we're dealing with that, that means that uh the sun and moon's rotation revolves around the earth, not like how we have it. So yeah, it's strange logic to have it that way, but they're living in their own universe. And as you mentioned before, there's other races. Um, remember the ponies of Saddle Arabia? 
they're there too. So maybe they can do something in the future. I don't know. It's it's hard to explain what we get to see more of because you want to see more intelligent beings besides the yaks and uh, dragons. And we do see and griffins. Yeah, don't griffins. griffins. Yeah, we do see griffins. Now all we're missing is. The horses from Saddle Arabia, the zebras from wherever they've come from, and we get to, well, I hope we get to see more of them because we need smarter characters because the comics have not been giving us anything good to work with. We have deers, we have bulls, we have minotaurs. Oh yes, minotaurs, we need them more. But yes, Silver, are you done with your final thoughts? I don't know if it's my final thoughts on you. I, I, I'm so good to yours. Sorry. Although you, you use yaks and intelligent creatures in the same sentence. I'm going to have to challenge you on that one sometime. <laughs> they, they have, you know what? Okay. I, I'm just confused because we do know that the sheep the can talk too. Smart. Yeah. The young yak that helped Pinky was smart. He was smart enough not to say anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The ability to speak does not make you intelligent. <laughs> we he do speak. Mm, true that. We do also know that sheep can talk too, and cows. And they are <laughs> held in pens by their pony overlords. <laughs> oh, <Six man>. <laughs> Well, he did say curse you sheep, so there might be something there. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Anyway, Silver, you done? How's the master pony race? Do you will accept our friendships? Nice. You'll accept them all? Oh, hey, wow. touch your... Yeah, uh, uh, Crap, I was going to make a... What was it, that latest special you did, um, Silver, but no. Never mind. It's, uh, what, the cockatrice? Viva la cockatrice. Yes. Hi, little cockatrice. I messed it up, shit. Uh, but anywho, anywho. You ca- ca- the cockatrice. Caca! Caca, caca! So, uh, that's your final thoughts, Silver? Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> Alright, and as for me... I like this episode a lot. It shows a different side of the universe or the pony universe. Because, well, we get to see more dragons. We get to see dragons interacting with other dragons. We get to see more world building of dragons. So that's good. And we also get to see Spike acting, I won't say manly, but I won't say differently. Spike just act the way he is, like the way he's brought up. And... That makes a big difference in this uh, gauntlet where with his kind nature, he made a friend and those two managed to get the scepter. Like Silver said before, for dragons, might makes right. But that doesn't mean that you can't be working together with someone else to get to the goal. And Spike proves this. Spike being the man that he is, Gives the scepter to Ember and wow, that's, he's not tempted by power. So wow, it says a lot about Spike. If he's not tempted by power, say like, aha, I am the dragon lord. All hail me. Spike shall be, sorry, Rarity shall be my waifu. Uh, but still, good episode, good episode. And with that, we end our review here. Uh, that was a pretty good episode and review. And for next week, wow, next week's episode is a fun one. I can't wait. I can't wait. Next week's comic review is going to be My Little Pony, Friends Forever, issue 24, written by Georgia Bell and art by Jay Foskett. I, oh, no. I I think it. you mean 20, yeah. Actually, I mean, I'm sorry, I'm getting mixed up. I thought it was 28, but no. No, 28 This was the current one that you did for EQD, which was a good one, too. But anyway, uh, in this comic, we are greeted by the return of Gilda. And Gilda goes to Carousel Boutique asking for Rarity's help to design sport uniform for their team. I got no idea what they call, but... Puffball. Yeah, Puffball. Puffball. Yes. Yeah. So how will this all turn out? Will Gilda strangle Rarity or will Rarity make... A uh, fashion star out of Gilda. We'll to find out. Catch us next week for another amazing review. So I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecile Vacuil. I am Sapphire Hudson. 
And I am Diet Silverquill, aka Manga Common. Yay! And we'll guys catch you next week with another awesome review show. We'll see you guys next week. See ya! Adios! Bye bye! Later days! Ah, too bad there's no Dragon Lord Silumgar. He could have destroyed everyone. Oh well. Be glad there wasn't a Deathwing in this universe. Ah, oh Blue Eyes White Dragon. No one takes that seriously anymore. What, the Blue Eyes? Come on. It's coming back, Silver. <laughs> <laughs>